something really random happen. And it was like, the accidents really happen. So, describe the day of the incident. The day. The day. Um, so the day of the incident was a regular Tuesday. It was April 23rd. It was um, a normal day. Uh, I was out with my friends. We went out to lunch at, you know, a sushi spot, had, you know, girl time. And um, my child had just started going to daycare. So he was at daycare, which was kind of like new for me because like for the first really year, almost two years of his life, he was with me and I kind of like held him close. He's my firstborn, of course. So, um, you know, I had a hard time like letting him go to daycare and he had just started. And I mean, it was nice because he was like learning new stuff. I started to get comfortable with my routine as a mom and have time for myself and get back to like kind of the things that I was doing before I had my baby. And I was just balancing like my time out really good so that was a nice thing um I just had more time for myself and more time to like move around get the things done run errands work you know and have time to you know associate with my friends and do stuff with them so I remember coming home that day and getting back home to my child uh after I had lunch with my friends or whatever I remember walking in the house and um, when I first saw him, he ran up to me and I remember I dressed him so cute that day. Um, he just looked so cute like that morning when he left and I just love like sending him off. But I remember coming back home and when he first saw me, it was like the sun was just shining on his beautiful face and he ran up to me and he grabbed my legs and he said, mama. And I just remember like, him just being so happy and I was just so happy with that moment to see like to see him see me and just be like I don't know it just it just I never I don't know if we ever had that moment but like that moment really made me feel like I just feel like it was such a beautiful day like the sun was shining on him I had a beautiful day it was a great day for me it was just such a normal day like everything was so beautiful and he was just I was just so happy to see my baby. We had just moved um, from the place that he's we have like he's lived in since he was a baby, and we lived in an apartment. But we had moved out like to uh, a house with big land, and we were adjusting to like the new environment, um, which brings up you know the pool, the pool in the backyard, um, and. We hadn't yet crossed that boundary, but that day, yeah. He around like family more, his cousins. He got more time to be around his cousins and exploring, exploring the land. He's very curious. So um, he was, very yeah, curious. he was, he was liking it. He was uh, loving it. He always kind of just, yeah, always wondering. Like uh, he's very independent. I would say he yeah. like even when like you say he always try to like uh eat his food by himself. Like, I always try to feed him. I'll be like, true. You know, he get his food. He'd be like, no. he grabbing for it. Like, I want to do it. Me. Like, let me do it. Or if you tell him no, you know, he'll sneak off and do it on his own. Like, he, yeah. true is just that type of person. Like, he very... always want to get what he wants. Like, that's what I see in him. Like, he's like, I'm going to get what I want. Or at least he I got to see. He has a very loud personality and he's very fearless. Yeah. Um. So. Because even when we was at the apartment, he would always, I would tell him, I'd be like, that's hot. That yeah. stove is hot. And he'll still go try to touch it, even though like she's cooking or something. have an issue after, like, yeah. no. But then when he figured out it was hot, when he touched it one day, he said, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. And now he know, but every time we, he go to that stove, like, it's hot, he's like, like it gotta cool down. I'm telling you, so it's just it, I'm telling you, it's a true story. So yeah, it's just he crazy. is very um curious, but he's also very fearless and like he said, very independent. He has a loud personality. He's just really one of a kind. Yeah. So I feel like it was good for him. Like I said, being around family, being in that environment. Um, but yeah, with his personality. And like I say, too, like even the day before, like I say, uh, right. even the incident the day before, I can recall 
basically, it was, I was outside yeah, and I told Dominique to come around. I was like, come here. Yeah, you were like, let's pray. And then it was just us in the car and I was like, let's pray. Yeah. And I was like, what was True at? I can't remember he was True. Watching, he was watching TV. Yeah, so it was like, go get True. He went in, he was like, I said, nah, pray, True need to come. Me, I said, come True pray. need to come right now. And he was like, go go get True. Yeah, I was like, and True I was need like, to come right now. Okay, and I went in the house, grabbed him. Then we good. This was the day before this happened. Literally the day before. Yeah. So, I don't know what called me to pray. Something was just over Leading. my spirit. Like, Leading. in that moment, pray. So, boom, I tell Dominique true. We had a lot. I can't even remember what I was talking about. But I know it was like, I always like try you to were, pray over my, like, they well-being, like, in their lives. Like, you know, like. But you kept reiterating. Like, you were praying so much over It was specifically so over, over true. true, too. Like, it was a direct prayer over true. I also, you know, my other son, too, as well. But I feel like them prayer, that prayer that day was specifically over him, majority, because he was there. I was just like, yeah. you know, I was on him. Like you were on the, yeah, it's some like heavy in that, yeah, in his on his behalf, yeah, for like you know his future, his well being, and all that. And then like you say, and yeah, you, I remember you saying like he's, you were like he's amazing, like he's he's one of a kind, he's special, yeah. Cause he's different. I never met nobody like True. Honestly, like my whole time, I've got a daycare and everything, and my whole entire life, like being around kids, being around myself, being a kid, I've never met nobody like True. You know what I mean? That's just one hundred percent fact. Remember, like I just never met nobody um, like True. He's like a live wire. He never stops going. He's like always moving around, and that's why I feel very like confident. Yeah, for sure. Strong willed. Strong. Strong will, most definitely. <laughs> I remember praying too, like when I was pregnant, I used to pray over my baby and my belly and stuff. Like I used to pray and I always used to be like, God, like give this, give my child a strong personality, give my my child personality, which I don't know if that's weird to pray for, but I remember I always used to always reiterate, like, I don't care as long as, as long as we can have a good time together. I just wanted him to have like a good personality, you know, get along with people and stuff. And that's just one of the things. And I didn't expect him to be that. Yeah. That that wild. Because around this time, like he was just starting to like uh like he was just starting to like talk and walk and stuff and things like that. So show his personality. Yeah, and like yeah. I feel like the daycare when he was going, it was speeding him up. He was starting to be around people, obviously. And then um It was bringing out a lot of his personality. It was yeah. it was speed like I wouldn't say, it was speeding him up. He was just starting to like He you was know, getting more comfortable. Comfortable, yeah. 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 And, and like, um, sure of himself in a sense, like, you know, who he is, like starting to develop who he was and what he likes. So the day of the incident, um, we were just settling into the home. Like I wanted to make it nice. Um, we had only been there for like a month. So, um, I was trying to like, you know, get the outside. We had worked on the inside a lot and it was nice and we renovated whatever. But I was like, okay, the outside needed a little work. So um, we were outside around the pool and I had noticed like there were some huge like weeds. Yeah, the weeds. The high. weeds were really high and it was bothering me. Like, you know, I didn't, I don't like, you know, who likes weeds, but um, I was, um, gonna pull those out but the kids were also outside so it was true and it was um one of our um nieces she's four and the other kid was eight a uh, little boy he's eight and they were outside they were on the side of the pool that like out playing in the grass of the yard but the pool is like gated so like inside the gate it's around there's like a little dirt area and that's where the weeds were the kids were on the side of the pool outside of the gate and at first I left True in the house and um, I was, he'd been a daycare all day, but I left him in the house cause I was like, I don't really trust him. Cause he's like one at the at the time and the other kids are four and eight. So I was like, okay, you, you gonna stay in here. But I remember it's like a glass door. I remember on the other side of the glass door, True was like, mm. and I hadn't seen him all day when I'm used to being with him all day. So I hadn't seen him all day. So it kind of like, he kind of like got me 
a little bit. I fell for it because I was like, you know, I, I miss my baby. I haven't seen him all day. He's so cute. Like, I love his little cry face. So I was like, all right, you can come out. You know, so I basically folded and I let him come outside. So I remember I went in the house to grab the bag. And I remember when I went in the house, something in my spirit was like, go hurry up and go back outside. And I was like, am I tripping? But I was like, no, let me hurry up and go back outside. So when I went outside, it's like everything just, my world obviously was sh shooken up because as soon as I get outside, his mom's like, hey, like, where's True? And you know, when a child, like my child goes quiet, there's something wrong. Because obviously, like we were saying, like he's, everywhere all the time you know you, you got to keep your eyes on him so um we just started looking looking for true me and his um Gigi started looking and we were like a little bit worried I remember my first thought was like maybe he went to the front of the house which Oral was on the side of the house, so I wasn't so worried initially, but I like I was in the back of my mind worried about there's a pond. So I was like, oh my God, Lord, please don't let my child have wandered over there to the pond, but it was pretty far. So I was like, surely he couldn't have gotten that far in that amount of time. Yeah, I remember so, they said something about they asked the kids where he was at and the kids, you know, four and eight, they like, I don't, I don't know. know. So like, yeah, we did. We were like, where's true? And they were like, I don't know. They were playing on the side of the house. Like there was some sand over there. They were playing with it. And true was playing with it too until he, you know, until he wasn't. So I remember we like just started looking for him. But at first, you know, it was pretty chill. Like we were just like, okay, maybe he's on the side of the house. Maybe he's in the front of the house. I remember we started going around the house and I didn't see him on the side of the house. So then we went to the front of the house and you know like when you're looking for your kid you start at first it's calm and then you start panicking then you start really panicking so i started really panicking thinking all these things like did somebody snatch up my kid you know thinking like what if one of the neighbors snatched him up or i'm pulling on all these doors they're locked so i pull on the front door it's locked i pull on my room door it's locked then i get to the other side of the house and i start running because I'm like, where you just get this, like your stomach and everything in your body, just like, it feels sick and you just, it drops. Everything just drops. Like you just feel sick. How much time I passed by? Um, only, it was only a few minutes, like that it took for us to get around the house though. It was only like maybe two, two minutes. Cause you know, like I said, you, you go slow at first and then you don't see your kid. Then you start running. You start panicking. You start sprinting. You, you, you trying to find. So I remember pulling on those doors and I'm glad now that they were locked. But I was like, oh my God, they're locked. You know, so thank God they were locked. But I remember running, running. And it was only like a few minutes, maybe two or three minutes. So I get back to the back of the house and I'm still like, where we don't know where True is. I remember going back to the deck into the pool area and I don't, you know, see him. And I was about to go in the house and I remember his Gigi was on the opposite side of the pool on the outside of the gate. And she looks, so say this is the pool, like she looks this way. She's like, oh my God, Dominique, he's in the pool. And I remember the super, like the superhuman came out of me. I jumped over that gate with one foot, one foot and launched my whole everything i don't even know how i did it without breaking my neck like and grabbed him out the pool. i just remember his body being like he wasn't face down but he was floating in the water and i remember grabbing him out of the water and his body was blue and his body was lifeless and uh, that was the that was the scariest visual like I don't even know how to explain it like the scariest thing that has ever I've ever had to see and I'm not gonna lie I've seen like lifeless bodies before because I've like done makeup on people for their funerals and things 
But to see my own child blue, lifeless, like, I can't even, I hate visualizing this because like, I don't ever wanna see that again, but I can't unsee it. You know, so I remember that and I remember kind of like the thoughts that were in my head, but I remember his mom was like, CPR, CPR. Like just as soon as I snatched him out the water, CPR. So I remember we grabbed him up, took him to the side of the, the, the pool where the grass was on a flat surface. And we just started doing CPR. And I'm so thankful that I, um, we both knew CPR. I took it in high school, but she has to take it like routine for what, what she does. So I remember like thinking like, you know, we were doing that. And I remember the thoughts in my head. I just remember like true was like lifeless. I'm, I'm just so on that right now because that's like the biggest thing. Like regardless of like what I was doing to like make the situation, try to make the situation better or like learn how to like, you know, the procedures and all that to like get him back to life he was lifeless like he was just laying there he was cold he was pale he was blue his lips were blue and purple and i opened i remember I, I i hate that i did it but i probably needed to do it i remember like doing his eye like open his eye and it was like i don't know how to explain it it was just nothing <laughs> i just feel like i can't like, I don't really know. Like, it's just me having to visualize it over. But uh, I, I I don't know. It's like at times I wanted to quit. I remember we were doing CPR. And um, honestly, I'm thankful for his mom. I'm thankful for his Gigi um, because she kind of kept me at a sane, sane place. If it wasn't for her, I don't know if True would be here either because she kept me at a sane place with the CPR. Like, she called... As soon as we could, we called immediately. We were on with the first responders and she was so calm. Like, how many, how many compressions is it? How many times do we do this? And I'm just like doing all this and I'm screaming, ah, true, no. Like, it's like, ah, I'm sorry, this is just a lot. Like trying to explain this moment, how I felt and even the actions. It's like, I'm doing the actions. I'm doing the CPR, but in my mind, I'm like thinking all these things. I'm like, this can't be it. This ain't my life right now. This can't be my life right now. I'm thinking like, God, no. Like I'm think I'm trying to have faith, but I also have doubt. So it's like so much stuff going on in my mind. It's like my current circumstance, what I'm doing with my son physically, my thoughts of faith, and then also like I'm angry. I'm, I don't understand how this happened to me. I'm angry a little bit, like, with God almost, too, because I'm like, well, like, why didn't you protect him from this, you know? Even though I'm the mom, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I know accidents happen, but it was just, like, all these things going through my head. I always remember just, like, doing the compressions, and I would give up, and I would just scream, and then I would keep going, and then I would just be like, no, no, no. And I remember saying, um, you know, I only got one year. I only get one year. That's all I get. And it's just at the same time, I'm still like, nah, I ain't, I ain't believing in that. But I'm still in my mind like, damn, I only get one year. So, ooh, y'all, I just, it's just that moment was a lot. And um, like I said, his Gigi kept me sane. And when I would have my freak out moments where I lost my sanity, she would take over. And sure enough, the first responders got there like it like three, four minutes and somebody just came, grabbed my baby, swooped him up, threw him over his shoulder, ran off super speed with him, put him in the ambulance. And I remember I was trying to get in the ambulance, like they shut me out. And even that was like, I couldn't see him. I didn't know what they were doing. I know I just was pacing back and forth, forth screaming, punching the ground and like trying to talk to God and like begging God and pleading God with God. Like I told him, I remember saying, God, like, if you just, if you just do this for me, if you just give me my baby back, like I was like, I'll do whatever. I just need true. I don't need nothing else. 
I don't care about nothing else and I don't desire anything else. I just want my son. And I just know like in those moments before they put me in the ambulance and told us like, let's go because they didn't get him back soon. I just, all I could do is really just like talk to God, lean on God and, and like really decree and declare like he shall live and not die. But that was all I had. That was the only thing I could do. And I remember the ambulance ride was even worse. It was even scarier because I couldn't even see him. All I could see, they wouldn't let me get in the back. They were like, if you don't calm down, you can't go. So I had to be calm. And that's hard. You know, if you're in a situation like this, how do you be calm? The guy in the front, I was like kind of mad because I'm like, he's telling me like, you need to chill out. I'm like, what? But he was telling me the truth. Like I needed to be calm. But I remember um, there was this little hole. I was sitting in the front and there was this little bitty hole this big and I could see and I kept turning around looking in that hole and I could just see like somebody's shoulder and then I could see up beyond their shoulder. I only could see my child's feet and I could see somebody at the end of his feet and I could see them pushing and pushing and pushing. I swear they're this man. They were sweating. They were sweat was coming down their face and they would look at me at times and I would feel like. Are they playing with me? Is my child gone and they're not just not trying to like let me know because they don't want me to freak out in this, you know, is this protocol? But I remember like they were working hard back there. Like they were pushing hard for truth. And all I could do was say, son, you got it. Son, you got it. You shall live and not die. All I could do was profess that over him. That's all I could do. And I was really trying my hardest to have faith in that moment, like, and really believe. But, um, um, yeah, we just had, that was like the longest ride of my life to the hospital. Yeah. Okay. I do consider this one, one of the worst days of my life, if not the number one, two to three. Just looking at my life, I say number <laughs> one. And I say that because this is my newborn. You know what I mean? We already had like, well, I wouldn't necessarily say I had problems, but she would always think like, oh, I can't even have a kid. I'm like, Dominique, bro, yeah. you can have a kid, bro. Just chill out, bro. But, you know, of course, when you get a kid, after worrying so much about not having a kid, I'm foreshadowing myself, but it's just fuck freaking crazy. So I'm just, like you said, basketball practice with my other little boy. You know, we get done with basketball practice. I look at my phone, I'm getting like, I got like 20 probably missed calls. Like five or six missed calls. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, yo, you know what I mean? They're like, Bishop True Drown. I'm like, what? And I'm driving, you know what I'm saying? With my little boy in a car. And I'm like, I can't remember what I said. Shit, I blacked out down there on the road. Boom, I hang up. Whatever we were saying, I don't even remember. Man, but I know I get the crying ASAP. Like, what the? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I'm blaming them. I'm like, these motherfuckers, that, you know what I'm saying? Boom, I'm like, come on, man. Like, if I was there, da 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 da, -da this wouldn't have happened. You know what I'm saying? My little boy, I'm like, fuck. Cause I'm like, this is little brother too. Don't mind you. Like, this is little brother. Like, you know what I'm saying? So he hearing this news after practice too. It ain't just me. Like, this is my little boy too. So he like, you know, he start crying. I, as I'm crying, I'm like, you looking at him? He like crying. He like, no, daddy, no, no, no. I'm like, bro, this is what's going on. So we, I'm supposed to be. We supposed to go to the crib. We gotta go to the hospital. We pulling up ASAP. Put on the gas. Like you said, it's quiet. Me and him is kind of quiet because it's like at this point, we don't know if he dead or if he alive. We don't know either or. So we just pushing up. We both quiet because it's like we crying, but it's like shit, we ain't really got nothing to talk about because we don't really know what's going on. And I'm not going to be, I'm not a negative person. So I'm just like, man, we finna see. So I get up there, boom. I can't even see him yet. I'm just see the family, you know what I'm saying? Dominique crying, but everybody got a little like life to him. And so that kind of made me happy. I was still, cause I, I I had to, in this moment. You just, you had a choice. But at that moment, I just chose 
to stay calm. But it's like, it's just crazy. Like this shit is just been crazy to me. This whole thing. But like I say, I just chose to be calm because I was like, why would I put another negative factor on top of a negative factor? Like that's not even going to make sense. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like you say, we all chose to do when we got in there. Um, like I say, shout out to uh, Rashonda. Rashonda was there. You know what I mean? She, you know. She worked there. Worked there. Boom. Saw us. Boom. Like, oh, what's going on? You know, so she was help she was like able to give us feedback on what was going on, like in due time. You know what I yeah. mean? So I'm like happy for that. You know what I mean? But we just all chose to pray. You know what I mean? Um, like you say, in that moment, you know, we all decided to pray. We went, they finally let us see us. Like, long story short, they went to let us see them. You know what I mean? And I just seen my little boy there just like, you know, like, damn, they're like lifeless. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he on a breathing machine. When he on a breathing machine at the time? Breathing machine. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, you know, a whole bunch of thoughts going through my head. Uh, but I never really, when I seen him, I felt like he was going to make it, though. Like, I don't know. Like, I just never had, like, once I seen him, like, he would look bad. But, like, when I seen him, I just had a feeling. Like, I don't know. Like, I just had a feeling. But it was, it's still, like, been difficult. But, like I said, I did have a feeling. When we got off the um, ambulance. I didn't get to see Drew when we went into the ER. I remember um, his auntie, which is his sister, pulling up and she was there with her little boys and they were already crying. My nephews, they love Drew. They're his favorite cousins, his two cousins that are his age. And we went inside and I remember I was asking, I was like, I can't go with him. And they were like, no, we need you to stay out here. So they took me and her. She was the only one there. I didn't have a phone. I just left my phone at the house. I just went in the ambulance and went with True. Didn't have on, I don't even remember if I had on shoes. <laughs> I remember him, he came in and um, I was just expecting him to be like angry with me, but he was very calm. And I honestly don't know how, like how. Yeah. I'm glad. He he had he came in with and, that. And I want to give a big shout out to your mom too and your pops because they really calmed me down too. But then also I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back too because I knew. Also I'm like damn, I don't know what she had to deal with either because I ain't never seen my son with no lifeless body either. I'm away. Like I say, it, you ain't like you say you ain't feel what I feel, but I ain't feel what you feel either. No, because we at different places. Like I say, it's it, it hurt like a mug to hear your. Baby. You know that's why I say it's like I be feeling for like I say whoever need to feel this message because. No, it's people weird. who really get them calls, bro. Like it changes people's relationships. You know what I mean? You like yeah. whoa, and then you gotta you know even though like. She right there with the, you know, it's just. And I have respect just, and for, for you in that circumstance. And that's why I brought it up because I tried to like, reason why I thought he would have, would have hated me is because I probably would have hated him. And I'm not going to lie and say that I wouldn't have been upset with him or blamed him as a mother. But even as a father, he had the right to feel some type of way, but he came in and his posture was not, it was totally opposite of what I expected and what I would have expected from myself. And that makes, I don't even know how to say that. That just is so big to me because he, I really needed, I really needed him in that moment to not be angry. And he was there for me the whole time. He never once blamed me. And I blamed myself, even when I blamed myself. Because it was so hard. It's hard. It's like, as a mom, you know, like, I did everything right. Like, I, I kept him, I sheltered him. I kept him from so much harm. So how did this happen? So... His blood, it looks like his down, like he was, had been down for a decent amount of time without a heartbeat and without 